Welcome back to another video. So as you can see, today's topic is how to get out of drawdown. Whoops, I'm the other way around. So this is probably one of the biggest, I suppose, pitfalls that people fall into is drawdown. And they have no idea how to react, how they got in there, how to get out. And I just want to go through pretty much my definitive guide on what to do when you're in drawdown. But more importantly, what you should do to control your drawdown. Okay, so drawdown is inevitable. We all have to experience it. It's the price of doing business, but you can be smart about it and reduce it so you don't get the sting as much as you should. Okay, so when we um, think about drawdown, drawdown really has power over us because of the emotions we attach to it. Okay, as you can see above, in the realm of trading, emotions are a wild winds. That can either capsize your ship or power your sails. I like that quote. So you can choose to be the captain or a passenger. So emotions amplify what you feel during drawdown. Okay, so understanding that drawdown is just, it's completely normal. It's not about suppressing these, your emotions, but it's about identifying the problems in your trading and finding a valid solution. Okay, this goes for all trading. This whole philosophy of just being a robot in trading doesn't work. It's impossible. Okay, we trade in our community with an algorithm. The robot does the trading. It does the analysis. We obviously get into the trades ourselves, but we can choose to get out of them. And this is where the emotions become an issue and get involved. So identifying the type of drawdown you're in is important you might have heard things when you started trading like relative drawdown absolute drawdown maximum drawdown and a few other different types There's actually tons of different types but in practical terms there's really only three that you need to worry about so that is a strategy based drawdown an emotional based drawdown and probability based drawdown okay i think it's kind of obvious even what they are based off of what i just said okay so strategy based drawdown is your it's number one, it's your strategy is not working correctly, okay? Or you're not trading the strategy correctly. You're impatient, you're constantly getting into trades before you should be, you know, pulling the trigger too late or then pulling the trigger too early. You've just no confidence in it um, and you just don't have enough forward or back testing results. This is normally um, compounded with our next drawdown, which is emotional based. So when you have two of these together, it's just, it's a lose-lose. It's so hard to get out of it. If you're only in strategy-based drawdown, it's just you've been lazy. You haven't done the work with the strategy. You don't correctly understand the strategy, so on. But that is strategy-based. And we'll go into more solutions later. Emotional-based or on tilt. You might have heard the term on tilt. It's like a poker term, gambling term, which essentially means that you get into a frame of mind where you can't think. Okay, your thought process your is just completely out the window and you're just pressing buttons and you don't even know what the hell's happening. Okay, worst place you can be in. It's a gambling mentality. If you're in it, you need to stop. But anyway, what are emotional based um, drawdowns? So you got in there because of things like fear, greed, impatience, revenge trading, overconfidence, anxiety, confirmation bias, loss aversion, herd mentality. Do any of them sound familiar? Do all of them sound familiar? Well, if you're in it because of this, that is also a bit of an issue. And then you have probability based drawdown. This is just a drawdown you get into because you have to get into drawdown. It's impossible not to. You cannot not get into drawdown ever. If you have a 70% win rate, okay, point over there. If you have a 70% win rate and a 30% loss rate, statistically speaking, you have to have losses in order to even have those statistics they begin with. So if you have a 70% loss rate and a 30% winner, let's say over 10 trades, seven winners, three losses. What happens if you have those three losses in a row? Can you handle that? Followed by a win, and then all of a sudden you have a 70% win rate. So again, you have to understand that no matter what the strategy is, there's no such thing as 100% win rate. So you have to accept losses. It's, it's literally impossible not to accept losses. And even getting things like over a 70% win rate going up to 80, it's completely nonsense. And it's more stress holding an 80 or 90% win rate than going for a more reasonable 70 or even 60% win rate and just making money over time. And that goes on to my next topic of accepting losses. 
You have to accept losses. It's the price of doing business. It's the price of your education. You know, losses teach you valuable lessons when you're doing something wrong and they make you accept the cost of doing business when you're doing it right. You know, if all you're doing, if all your goal is in trading is to avoid losses, avoid losses, you're going to get nowhere. You're going to get absolutely nowhere. The way I kind of think about it is, is that if you're constantly fixating on the short term, the two losses I had today, oh my God, I had, you know, two losses today, I had another three losses yesterday, but then overall you still have a 70% win rate and you're actually making money logically, but you're just so fixated on those losses, you can't see an overall picture of how you're actually doing. Your overall performance means nothing because all you're doing is fixating on the small amounts. The way I kind of relate it to is imagine if you're stepping into a room or you're just outside of a room and you're looking in that room and you can see the whole room, the door's wide open, you can see the entire room. And someone's outside the room, they can't see in the room, so they ask you to explain the room to them. They're like, is there a bed in the room? Yeah, there's a bed in the room. What color is the wall? It's black and white and orange. It's a fucking weird room. You know, is there a window? Yeah, there's a window. Is there a light switch? Yeah, there's a light switch. Is there, you know, how many sockets is there in the wall? There's five sockets I can see. You know, is there, what else is in the room? There's a computer, there's this, there's that, there's clothes on the floor. You can see it over, you can see the whole picture because you're taking everything into consideration when you're looking. But when you close the door and you're looking at the door through a keyhole perspective and the only thing you can focus on is one or two things at once and you get asked exactly the same questions. Is there a bed in the room? I can see the bottom of a bed, so I think there is. How many sockets is there? I can see one. I think there's only one, but we already know there's five. You know? Is there a light switch in the room? I don't know. I actually can't see it. Can't see it. Don't see a light switch. There mustn't be one. And this is what I mean. If you focus on these small things that happen naturally over time, you lose view of the bigger picture. And that is not accepting losses. You have to accept losses. So now that we've kind of talked about the different types of drawdowns, understanding that losses are needed, they're acceptable, they're the price of doing business, and even going back on this one actually here, okay? When it comes to losses, when you start a business and training as a business, let's say you start, and I always give this example, imagine you start at a shoe shop and you got a 100 grand loan to start off. Yeah, business loan, 100 grand loan, and you maybe 50 grand, whatever, 100 grand, let's just use 100 grand. And you know, you're making a big shop. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty big. So you get in there, you hire staff, you do up all the, the decorations, you do all the maintenance, you get the electricity turned on, you do the plumbing, you do up the staff room, you paint all the walls, you make everything look pretty, you buy loads of mannequins, you know, you do all the shelves, then you buy like 40 grand, which is probably a really random number here to use, but you buy 20 grand, 30 grand, 40 grand, five grand, whatever, worth of stock. And as I said, you hire staff as well. And then you pay your rent, then you pay your insurances, and then you pay your taxes, and you pay all of these things. And the business isn't even opened yet. Well, guess what? That is the price of doing business. That's the cost of doing business. You have invested all that money in the hope that people are going to come in and buy those shoes, or buy the dresses, or the fancy whatever the hell you're doing. That is the cost of doing business. You've taken a 100 grand loss before you've even made money. Open up a gym, open up a coffee shop, open up whatever, add whatever cost, add them all up, whatever the hell you want to cost. That is accepting losses. That is accepting the cost of doing business. But when you have no plan and no structure and you're just throwing fucking shit at the wall and hoping it's going to stick like you're doing right now, then yes, it's really hard to accept losses because you've no, you've no outcome in your head besides losing. So having a plan of action and, and so on and so forth is really, really important. But again, I really want you to understand that when you take a loss in a trade, that needs to happen. That is your business expenses. You're going to get that back with interest in the future. As long as you get your shit together, accept that losses are part of the job and you will eventually, that money will come back to you. 
And as I said, it will come back to you with interest. But it will only do it if you sort your shit out now. So you have to accept losses. You have to. Some people go and do five years worth of degrees and spend a hundred, two hundred grand of student loans, like in America. And they're like, oh, hundred grand worth of student loans. Pfft, oh, that's no problem. And then you tell that same person, oh, I'm going to start up trading. I'm going to invest a thousand. Oh, that's gambling. You'll never get that money back. Oh, my God, it's gambling. Coming from the 100 grand loan person. And I probably just, you know, irritated a few people with massive student loans. And I'm sorry you're in that position. But it's uh, 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 the whole point is you have to accept the loss. You went to school. You accepted the loss of a massive loan that you'll have to pay back eventually. Some people might have to pay back. Some people might have to pay back more with the hopes that your job in the future is going to pay that back. You opened up that business. You took all of that expense on to start off the business in the hope that people are going to come in the door and buy. You're trading right now. You're putting money into the market. You're losing with the hope of it to come back to you if you get your shit together and you get everything under control. It's how it works. Accept losses. Be a big boy. Be a big girl. And realize that that is the cost of doing business. No matter where you are. So can you accept those losses? Is another thing we need to talk about. Are you overdoing it? Are you putting too much towards trading? Are you putting too little towards trading? Again, these are things you need to take into consideration. So now that we've talked about all that, we need to talk about managing your risk before you even get into a really deep hole. Because you might be watching this right now and you might already be in a very deep hole. Oh, I have 6% drawdown and I have 8% maximum drawdown in my account. You know, whatever that may be. Now, the big issue when it comes to funded accounts is it's giving people a really bad perspective of what acceptable drawdown actually is. For a professional trader using a personal account, going into 10, 15, even 20% drawdown in their time of trading is normal. It can happen. Think of it this way. A lot of people are like, oh, no, that's completely unacceptable. That will never happen. Blah, 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 blah. Excuse me. If you get a 100K account and you blow that account and then you get another 100K account and you blow that account with a 10% drawdown each time, you are in 20% drawdown. It's the same thing. The only difference is the personal account trader is going to keep their shit together, hopefully, and get back out of it. The same way you would if you had a 100k account, passed this one, and then made 20% over a space of a few months and got yourself out of the drawdown anyway. Now, I know it's not the same thing in relation to, well, with the personal account, you actually lose your money. With the other account, you're losing evaluation fees. But let's be real here. Evaluation fees can add up to the same amount, if not more. So it's a stupid argument. But what I'm talking about is, Funded accounts give people a really bad mindset thinking that 10%, 15%, 20% drawdown is bad when in reality there's people there, maybe you, that have lost four or five funded accounts in a row, which technically means if you're trading four or five 100k accounts, you've lost like 50 grand worth of funding. Now, again, it's not real money, but I just want you to put you into perspective of being in certain percentage of losses is not as bad as you actually think. So... How do we manage risk? What I teach in my community is fixed risk versus dynamic risk. If you're a beginner trader, dynamic risk is the way to go. If you're a more advanced trader, fixed risk is the way to go. Fixed risk is really popular right now. 1% risk, 2% risk, 0.5% risk. But for some people, it's a lot harder to manage those drawdowns and it's a lot harder to get out of those drawdowns. And I'll show you a pure, I'll show you actually examples of both. And this might be a bit of an epiphany for you. So dynamic risk is beneficial for beginner, beginner traders, people who lack confidence and experience, especially if it's a new current strategy. But also, it can actually be a brilliant strategy to employ forever. Some people just love if they get into a really bad streak, it doesn't really burn them too much. You know, do you make as much money as a fixed risk? No. But do you lose as much? No. So you have your pros and cons there. Now, obviously, when it comes to a personal account, risk is very different. I have a whole risk um, management protocol for small accounts because obviously risking 1% or 2% or half a percent on like a 1,000 euro account or 2,000 euro account doesn't really cut the mustard, does it? 
takes a lot longer to build it up. Now, you can do that for a while. Like what I normally say to people is follow this sort of risk profile when you're starting out regardless of what you're trading. But again, inside my community, we do have a small account guide which will which will really, really help you to um, amplify your small accounts quite quickly. And then when you get up to a bigger account, you can start really reducing your risk and being a lot safer by employing what I'm showing you right now. So again, small personal accounts, you do have to risk a little bit more, unfortunately. And again, inside my TBR Academy on the course, we do go through how to grow a small account, but I'm not gonna go over that now. I'm just gonna go over this. So dynamic risk profile, you start with 0 0.25 of whatever you're trading. And every subsequent winning trade, you increase your risk by 0.25%. If you have any losing trade, you reset your risk right back down to 0.25% and restart the process over, up to a maximum of 1%. If you're a really skilled trader, you can double all these numbers. Okay, if you're really skilled, you can start with 1%, your incremental increases can be 0.5% and your maximum risk can be 2%, you know? Again, you can mix up the numbers a little bit if you like, but I think this is the best. This is personally the best and it, there's a lot of benefits to it. So here's an example. So you can see here in this example, okay, that you can see that at the very top there, you can see the first winning trade was 1,500. So again, what are you risking? 0.25%. And with this example and with the next example I'm going to show you with fixed risk, they're all based around the same concept. The risk is what I'm going to show you, but the trades are all going to be three RR trades. So it's either three RR, which is three X what you risk or one RR loss. OK, is that simple? So the top one starting off with a 100K account. This is one month. OK. Starting off with a 100k account, the first winning trade was a winning trade, one three RR winning trade, risking 500, which is 0 0.5 of a 100k account. That's 1500 of a win. Very top up there, okay? I'm gonna move myself near there. See that? Then the next trade was another winning trade, but remember, we won this trade, so this trade is increased by 0.25%. So now we're risking 750 euro. We win. Multiply that by three. You get this. The next trade, we increase our risk by 0.25%. We are now risking 1,000 euro. We lose. We now reset our risk down to 0.25%, which is 250 euro. And we lose. And then we go on and we risk 250 euro. We win. We now win 750. We now increase our risk from 250 up to 500, we lose. And so on, so forth. I'm not gonna do it all here right now, down the whole way, all the way down here, okay? <clears throat> now, you can see as well that there are occasions where we go into bad drawdown, like bad days, okay? And we'll see them right here. So we had five losing trades, followed by another five losing trades, followed by two subsequent losing trades, followed by another two losing trades here. We had an awful four days. Awful, awful, awful. Now, this day wasn't awful because we actually ended up making money here. But the next two days, awful. But are they really awful? Because we're stuck in a losing streak, we're not increasing our risk. So we're losing 250 the whole time. Yeah? And then we win and we win and we start increasing our risk again. And then we lose and we bring it back down. So just see this horrible streak of losing is one, two, three, four, five, and five. 14 losing trades. 14 losing trades, my friends. I'm giving, a, by the way, this whole thing right here, this is like really bad results in relation to win rate. Because you want to know the win rate of this example here. 36%. 36% loss percentage. That's how much this person is losing. That's the win rate. They're losing 64% of their trades. Out of 85 trades in 30 days. Oh my god. That's amateur win rate. Is it? What are you focusing on? Are you focusing on a win percentage or are you focusing on a percentage gain on the account? Because what I see right here, this person made a lot of money in a month. 
again, three RR trades are a loss. That's that's the example I'm giving here, okay? If you're trading my strategy, which is TP1 is 1RR and TP2 is 3RR and TP5 is dynamic, or sorry, TP3 is dynamic, it can be anything. If in, in this scenario you traded my strategy, you ignored TP1 and you only went for TP2, this is what it would look like. This is literally what it would look like, okay? Um, and one thing I want to show you as well, again, we have another pretty bad streak here. Again, I wanted to give the example of this, of losing more than you're winning and showing the difference between fixed risk and dynamic risk, what would actually happen. Now, in this scenario, this person, I don't know, I don't think they would have lost their account. So if we grab a calculator and we bring it up here, okay? And we look at this scenario here, we could see here that we have um, 1,250, so that's going to be 200 and 2,500 plus minus 1,000 plus 250 plus another 250 plus another 250. So all these 14 losing trades in a row was 4,250. Usually a daily loss with these funded accounts are what? Like 5%. What is the maximum loss? 10%. You wouldn't even go halfway. So you would have survived those 14. You would have survived. Yeah. Keep that in mind. Now, same example down here. Horrible losing streak. So we could say from maybe right here. OK, all the way down to here is the losing streak. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five losing days. OK, so we have one thousand. Which is again one thousand with this. This is what we're adding up here now. Yeah. So you have 1,000 plus 750 plus 125 plus 1,000 plus 250. Would you look at that? You still didn't blow your account. Wait. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 losing trades in a row. Is it is a light bulb going off in your head right now? Why are you blowing so many accounts? Okay. Still wouldn't have lost the account, even with that. Now, obviously, if there's certain accounts with trailing drawdowns and all this sort of malarkey, you may have lost the account. But again, I'm just going off of um, um, just kind of scenarios here inside our head. <clears throat> and you can see overall that the worst, the best winning day. And then obviously you see after that, because we again, these this is all based around you're following your rules. You're doing what you're supposed to do and you're following the risk. OK, you never put yourself into horrible drawdown that you can't get out of because, you know, this sort of stuff rarely happens if you're being good. OK, see all this stuff right here that I like that rarely happens. And if it does happen, it usually is because you're getting into the whole emotional volatility side of things, which we'll get into soon. So. You're looking at here quite good results. But one thing I want to get, keep an eye on is look at that equity curve. That's not that bad, is it? It's not that bad. Now, fixed risk. We all know what that is. We risk 1%, 2%, you know. But again, with funded accounts, you kind of have to base your risk off of how much you have to lose. And you have to determine that before you actually start using the funded account. Let's say your maximum drawdown is 8%. Well, if you're risking 1%, you only have eight opportunities to get it right. Double it. Go down to 0 0.25. You now have 16 opportunities. That's okay. Okay? That's not too bad. Let's say you were doing a one-phase evaluation. You only have 6% drawdown. 1%, you have six opportunities to get it right. Are you serious? Like, remember, how easy is it for that shit to happen? We all know it's easy. It doesn't matter how good your strategy is. You can have 70% win rate. For the for love of God, you can have an 80% win rate. And this shit can still happen. It can still happen. The laws of probability can still make this happen. So, by risking like these high amounts, you're not going to get far. What are you... like? What, what it's, it's all this like rush mentality. I need to get it done quickly. I need to get it done. I need to make my money now. Okay? And you end up making nothing. And you always say to yourself, if I had just done this, this wouldn't have happened. Well, start doing it now. So again, if you have like a 6% drawdown and you're going for one phase evaluations, then go for 0.25% risk. You've now gone, what, for like 24 tries it would take you before losing the account? 
I really personally think myself that you would want anywhere, you want to have at least over 15 opportunities to get it wrong, possibly even 20, between 15 to 20 opportunities to get it wrong for fixed percent risk. Because if you're under that, then your 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 risk profile is all wrong and it's it's way too you're you're gonna lose the account. So again, in my honest opinion, I think you should have at least 15 to 20 losing trades before you lose the account. How do you work that out? Find out what your maximum drawdown is. Let's say it's 10 and then divide your risk into it. So again, if you had 20 tries to get it right, okay, divide your risk into it. Obviously, if you had 20 tries, sorry, not 20 tries, you, you put in your, your, your drawdown. So 10% drawdown and then divide it by your risk. So divide it by 2%. That's five tries. Obviously, that's pretty crap. 10% divided by 0 0.25. You've 20 tries. There you go. Use 0.5%. If you're losing your account with 20 tries, with 10% drawdown, you're either emotionally volatile and destroying your chances or your strategy isn't working or you don't understand how the strategy works. So you need to get the work in that regard. Here's an example of fixed risk few things to consider before we even look into it. Again, same rules apply. 1% uh, risk, One that's going to be 1,000 euro loss. A win is going to be 3,000 because it's three R minimums, okay? And that's what we're going with this example. Again, I'm not going to go through all this. It's exactly the same format, but I want you to look at, you would have lost the account multiple times by trading like this. You would have lost the account multiple times. And this isn't that many trades. This is 85 trades an entire month, okay? If you're an active trader, you can easily get two to three trades per day, maybe even four, depending on your strategy. Now, with my strategy, it can be less than that. But again, I'm just giving, giving you an example like this. Again, horrible win percentage, yes. But again, I want to give that example. Yes, it is more money than the other one, okay? Almost 40,000, 25,000. This dynamic risk, never blew the account this blew the account a few times so let's look at the examples here blew the account well half the account but the next day would have blown the account let's say if you went off the rails and did all of this in one day and you hit your maximum drawdown for the day which is usually five percent that would have lost it even if that didn't lose it and you stopped trading that would have lost it the next day you're ten thousand down here, you would have got wrecked, okay? You had a really bad time. There was loads of news. It was NFP week. You kept trading. You blew everything, okay? You lost so much money, you kept going against it. You would have lost the account there. You would have lost the account there. You would have lost the account there. You literally would have lost the account like three or four times if you traded like this. And I'm sorry, this is very normal. There's a lot of people that have this win percentage. There's a lot of people that are trading like this. Again, obviously, if the the roles were reversed and all of this was actually 64 winning days and 36 losing days, which is what would be normal, okay, if you're trading a strategy that's actually quite good. Now, with a three-hour minimum, you, might, you will probably have a lower win percentage. But again, it's not, it's happened loads of times. But this is with a 1% risk. But what I want to show you more than anything else is look how aggressive these drops are. The problem with these is people can't handle this loss. Most people cannot handle this. They freak out when there's such a sharp drop in their account, which again leads to all the other things like emotional volatility and so on and so forth. Look at the difference. Look at this. That's nice, gradual and easy to manage. That is a roller coaster. So can you handle losses? When we go back to this, can you accept losses? If the answer is, I find it really hard, I struggle all the time, every single time I have a losing trade, I, you know, I, I doubt myself, I doubt the strategy. Well, you haven't tested the strategy enough. You haven't back tested the strategy enough. There's so much you haven't done at that point. And if you can't, if this sort of emotional swings 
with PL swings is too much for you, then you shouldn't be trading with fixed risk. Now, you can fix this a little bit more by reducing your risk by half and then reducing it again by half. But again, if you just have to be a fixed risk trader, again, this is just risking 1%, which is again, a very common way of trading, but this is your probability of losing your account a lot of times over, you know? So these were quote unquote bad trading results because the, um, the, the win percentage was only 36%, but both of them made money. This blew multiple funded accounts this didn't blow any funded accounts. If this was a personal account and this was a personal account, well, then the dynamic completely changes because the drawdown in this doesn't matter as much because there's no rules. And as long as you can hold your shit together, you can get out and you can make more money. But with a funded account, this is not acceptable. With a funded account, this is acceptable. So again, dynamic risk is much better for funded accounts because it's much slower to lose them. You, you're you much more gradual equity curves and it's it's very easy to get out of a shit situation because you can hold yourself together. Because let's be real here, losing 250 euro on a 100k account is fucking nothing, you know? Most people lose a thousand or they move their stop loss and lose two or 3,000. So these things don't really, it's, it's fucking nothing. It's pigeons, it's absolutely nothing. You don't feel bad about losing this. You feel fucking really bad about losing multiple of these. So again, if you're trading a personal account, fixed risk, a big personal account, fixed risk is fine. It's fine. As long as you can manage these emotional swings, yeah? These P&L swings. You're, you're not allowed this unless you have this. You're not allowed this unless you have this. It's just the way it goes. You cannot have a chart that just goes like that. It doesn't work like that. So if you can't handle these drops, because all of these drops, see this drop and that 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 drop. And that, drop. that was all times you could have lost your mind. Those are the times that are important where you, wh how you act. That, 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 that. That's what's important. That is when you, you, you hold your shit together. Because all of this, when you're winning, you learn, you learn nothing when you're winning. You learn nothing. Okay? So that's the difference between fixed risk and dynamic and who I think you should go for. Again, if you're trading with a small account, I have a whole different guide on that. It's very different. I use fixed dollar amounts when I'm trading small personal accounts. And there is much more risk. There is. You're either in the camp of you're able to do that. You get a 500 account. You risk a little bit more to multiply it faster. And you're good at the strategy and you're, you're, you have everything under control. You're quite good at that. Or you stick to dynamic risk until you get an understanding of the strategy. You feel confident. You get a month or two of good results. Not like that though. You know, you get like a 65, 70, 75% win percentage. Then you can start bumping up and use the small account uh, stuff that I've, I've taught inside our community. So, again, now that we've talked about drawdowns and we've talked about this, let's talk about strategy of trying to get ourselves out of the drawdown, okay? So understand first what drawdown you're in. Strategy-based, emotional-based, probability-based, again, is crucial. So again, strategy-based, the cause is really lack of understanding of the strategy. You just have not back-tested it. You have not forward-tested it. Your discipline is shit. You're impatient. You're constantly getting into trades before you should be. Your entry is like right here, but you keep entering fucking up here. And then by the time it gets down to your entry, you've hit a stop loss. And then it bounces exactly where you're supposed to get in. And then you enter as it goes up. And then it naturally comes back down because it needs to before going back up. You get stopped out again only for it to go all the way up but if you just got into the original position you would have been fine you know these are things like you know you have to make sure that you're conducting your back testing because we're we're creatures of habit when we see something happen over and over and over and over and over again we expect it to happen over and over and over and over again we feel more confident in leaving it naturally happen you know if every single day you know a fucking clone runs past your window at the same time every single day. 10 o'clock, clone runs past your window. The first time, you fucking jump out. You, you, you almost die. It's super scary. Second time, you're like, that fucker run past my window that time yesterday as well. And then the third day, you're like, five minutes now, he's going to run past. He's going to run past. And then he runs past. And then the fourth day, you're like, yeah, there he is. Then the fifth day, you're just like, yeah, there he was. Because you got used to it, you it's the same thing is happening over and over again. You're expecting the same result. 
okay so the only thing only way you can expect a result a good result from your strategy is if you've back tested it and then you forward tested it on a demo account and in a live market and then you apply real money to it but everyone skips that phase because it's not sexy you're not making money well you're not making fucking money now so how about you just you know test and not lose money and build up the confidence in the strategy and stop being impatient oh i did one week worth of back i did one day worth of back testing i did three trades and they were all winning trades i'm super confident in the strategy and then the next day you get into a trade and you shit your pants straight away Conduct more backtesting, refine the strategy. Consider implementing the dynamic risk to reduce your overall exposure when you learn the strategy, okay? The last solution is, is you've been lied to and a strategy doesn't actually work. That's, that's, that's a very big possibility. Now, my strategy has been live forward tested for an entire year. Live in a group, sharing signals, everybody taking them, all the data lined up, all there. We have an algorithm trading the strategy as well. Live fo live tested, back tested for years and years and years. Could not have any more information in relation to does it work. I know mine works because of that situation. So I will never be in a strat strategy based drawdown ever because I understand how the strategy works. I will leave a play out. I have the discipline to leave a play out. One of the big causes as well of this is is you get into a trade, you don't trust it, you get out early only for it to go in your direction. <clears throat> or you just don't take the trade because you just feel unconfident. Again, all of those issues come back to you didn't do enough testing, you didn't refine the strategy enough, you don't understand it enough. Okay, you could be completely trading it wrong. You could be marking up the strategy. Like my strategy, for instance, when I see people, they'll message me like a month or two in. They might not say anything at all inside the group. And then two months in, they're like, oh, Rob, you know, I can't get the strategy to work and this, this. Here's here's some of my results. Here's my back testing journal. And then I look at like 10 of the trades and all 10 of them are, are wrong. They were not, they were not, the market structure was drawn wrong. The Fibonacci's were drawn wrong. The entries were wrong. There was no, like, all of it was wrong. And the only way you can refine the strategy, especially if you're in a, a community like mine or someone else's, is asking questions constantly or you're wasting your money. So make sure that you're actually trading the strategy properly before you invest so much time into backtesting because that is one of the biggest slaps in the face is when you don't do that. So it's very, very, very important that you get that shit together. And that is how you, that's the solution really to a strategy-based drawdown. Now the problem is, is when this is conflated and mixed in with this emotional based drawdown when you just feel like shit and because the strategy isn't working because you don't understand it you start revenge trading FOMO greed <clears throat> and a bunch of other different causes now one of the biggest ones I found is obviously like revenge trading FOMO and greed are big ones but financial troubles is a massive one people are trying to pass their funded account this week today yesterday and because of that they over risk they over leverage because they just want to get it done as quickly as possible and the unfortunate truth is is that a lot of people shouldn't be trading in the financial position they're in and that's that's fine it is okay but you have to give yourself a good environment and a good foundation before you ever start trading if you're constantly trading with money that you have to pay rent with well then um you're going to be trading from a realm of scarcity. You're not going to make logical decisions. You're going to rush. You're going to be impatient. You're going to get back into trades when you know you shouldn't. And this is kind of one of the biggest ones. Now, solutions. Let's talk about the financial one first. Obviously, having more money helps. So <clears throat> the way I kind of do it and the way I kind of say to people is, is that you have to put aside money that is spare for you to trade. If I tell you right now, Okay, how much do you have spare per month after you pay your bills? And you can't tell me that. Well, then you are in a very bad position. You need to be able to tell me how much you actually have spare every single month after you have um, paid all your expenses. That means you haven't done a budget and you, you, you're literally pissing into the wind. So what I would like to hear is, okay, I make two grand a month. It's a thousand euro for all my bills. Okay, I'm using random numbers here. Thousand euro for my bills. 
and then another 500 euro for all my amenities whatever and then another 200 euro for knickknacks here and there so i'm left with like 300 euro a month well that's how much you have to lose that's how much you have to trade every single month you don't have 400 you don't have 500 you don't have a thousand you have 300 and if you lose that you get back on demo and you start teaching and doing education for the rest of the month until you get another 300 euro that you could throw it back into the pot again that is how you do it because if you don't and you're constantly financially trying to scrape yourself out of a hole it's just there's no other way you'll start taking out loans to trade you'll start taking loans from people you'll start getting yourself into a horrible position and if you're in that position i really feel for you i'm sorry that you put yourself into that position but you are the person who put yourself into that position you have to stop and you have to stop trying to gamble your way back out you need to get another job. You need to double up in your time and work. You have to do overtime. You have to get yourself out of that financial burden first and then figure out how much you have to spare and then trade with that. It's the only way. When it comes to the other things, again, like before, like what I said at the very start, implementing dynamic risk pro, pro profile is probably the biggest one that you should do anyway. Um, setting a cool down timer. So let's say you have a losing trade and stress is high revenge trading is about to happen you need to just remove yourself from the trading environment or set a cool down timer i usually say like 30 minutes uh set a 30 minutes walk away from the computer you're not allowed to look at the charts the way i kind of do it for myself especially when it comes to the emotional base i haven't ha i don't have a road in here but it's usually two losing trades in a row and i am done that's it for the day Okay, two subsequent losing trades. So if you have one losing trade, one winning trade, one losing trade, that doesn't count. One losing trade, one winning trade, one losing trade, one losing trade, you're done. Two losing trades in a row and you are out. You are done. You're tapped out for the day. Again, what I would normally do after any losing trade is set a cool down timer. If you get if your if your trade hits a stop loss, there's no reason you should be getting back into a trade right now. Because you've determined where you got out is your stop loss. So why are you getting back in where you determined was a losing trade? Doesn't make sense. This is what happens when you start tr treating your trades when you're on tilt and you're not really thinking clearly. So you need to remove yourself from the environment and reduce your risk significantly. Again, using the dynamic risk pro pro profile. And you just need to just relax. And get away from the environment. I know it's a lot harder. It's the worst thing someone could tell you when you're stressed out is relax. But you just have to fucking relax. Just get away from the computer. You can't relax when you're at the computer. So go away from it. Okay. Um, and again, like reflect on environmental factors, stressors that could also be influencing it as well. If you are in an environment where you're trading around parents, you're trading around family, you're trading around friends. They don't really believe in what you're doing. Or it's just a high stress environment. Well, you shouldn't be doing a high stress thing in a high stress environment. You need to have your own space. You have to have a room. You need to go to a coffee shop. You need to just get away from everyone. And that's where you should be doing your trading. OK, places where other outside influence stressors can't affect you. Your partner can't argue with you. Your child can't throw something at your head. Your mother can't come into your room and tell you clean your room. You know, you can't have those things around you when you're trading. You cannot have anything. What like if you're in a trade and you're, you've lost two trades and you're minus a thousand in your next third trade and your partner comes in and roars at you or your child comes in and starts screaming in your face that th that those moments will destroy your career because now you're in a state of panic you're already lost like two grand your net your your next trade is already losing you're going to double down on a trade you're going to be like okay i'm going to double down on a trade and just get out of this one really quickly and then what if i just get out now or what if it goes back into profit oh my god i need to fucking get the kid i need to change the nappy i need to do this i need to do that you are fucked you're fucked you're going to destroy your career you're going to lose all your fucking money that is the worst position you can be in so remove yourself from the environment so having a good environment is key other influencing stressors like having a bad day being sick these are things that you should not be trading under if you just come home and your boss has just screamed at you and you're like he's fuck you blah blah blah, blah, blah. you're doing a shit job which could never happen but you get what i mean and you get home and you're pissed and you're angry and you go towards the charts you're gonna lose 
because you're going to lose you're going to trade from a sense of again financial troubles you want to leave the nine to five you want to fucking stick it to that boss you want to make more money than him so then you jump down you over risk you over leverage and you lose so again these are all things you have to take into consideration unfortunately i can't go through every single emotion on our website um this is part of the tbr academy algo which is my trading community we have a whole trading course this is our module on trading psychology you can see it goes through every single emotion one by one i can't do that here unfortunately this is already a 45 minute video this would make it a three hour video but big ones to consider here again fear you're not doing enough back testing you're fearing that it's not going to work out. You're going to lose all your money. You don't have confidence in the strategy. It's all about pattern recognition. Remember the clone running past your window. You need more pattern recognition. Greed. Setting your stop losses. Setting your take profits. And actually taking the damn profit when you said you're going to take it. Stop moving your take profit. Stop. Just stop. Okay. The worst thing you can do is be up 100 points and not take any fucking profit because you think it's going to go to 150 points. Only put the reverse back down to 50 and then stop you out. Yeah? Impatience FOMO. Again, this all goes back to financial problems and a bunch of other things. But you have to wait for your setups. The market is comes to you. You don't come to the market. The market goes where the fuck it wants. And you, the only thing you're hoping to do is to jump on, make a bit of money and jump off. Okay? Revenge trading. We know what that is. Set your cool down timers. Get out of the house. Big, big, big one. Overconfidence. When you have multiple winning trades in a row. Do not fucking change your risk. Do not change your risk. Don't change your TP model. Don't change anything. You're winning. Enjoy it. Wait till you're losing again. Remember what I said. You're, you, the only thing you gain when you're winning is overconfidence and it's not good. Bad. Stress and anxiety. This is a big one. As I said, this is a comprehensive one for me. This is like fucking seven videos or like six videos of like six hours of content. It's just too much to go in here. But stress, anxiety, these things can just be a lot of different things. It can be you're just you're just not determined in your life. You don't exercise. You don't eat well. Stress and anxiety is always high. You've just everything is really, really like, again, it's just too much to go into. But a, a, a lot of this goes into like if you're not taking care of your body then you know a lot of people are like oh you know i can't go to the gym or i can't do exercise or i can't eat all this you know healthy food or i can't drink this water i can't go to bed at the right time if you can't even follow these rules with your body how can you follow trading rules you think you're going to stick to your stop loss size or your risk size when you can't even fucking go outside the door and go for 10k steps or drink water or go to bed at a reasonable time. So again, a bit too comprehensive to go in here. Confirmation bias is a bad one. Ah, uh, it's gone. It's it's pumped a thousand points. Can't go any higher. I'm going to short it. Oh, it's pumped another 500 points. I'm going to get into another short here. Can't go any higher. Thousand points later. The RSI is over 50 or RSI is over 100. I mean, it's at 100. It can't, it can't go any higher. It's impossible. 500 points more. Can't go any higher. It's already high. It can't go any higher. Five accounts gone. Two losing trades in a row and you're fucking wrong. Okay? Change your bias. Stop being so one-sided because an indicator tells you the market will do whatever the fuck it wants. Loss aversion. Removing your stop loss. I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose. I'm just going to move my stop loss to here. And now to here. And now to here. And now to here. And now to here. Now to here. Now to here. Now to here. No. No. And then you lose all your money. Because your 1% loss is now 15%. Or 10% or 5%. You lost it all. So stop. You have to lose. Herd mentality. Rob is going long. So I'm going to go long. Why is Rob going long? I don't know. He's just going long and going long. My friend just bought thousand shares of bitcoin thousand shares of bitcoin that would be crazy my my friend bought a hundred euro worth of bitcoin <laughs> i'm gonna buy 200 euro because he usually makes money and i'm just gonna follow him no come up with your own conclusions stop following the herd and this one don't mind about that one so again it's a lot more in depth 
and unfortunately I can't go into it too much so if you do want more of that you can join the TBR Academy and I can mentor you one to one and probability based drawdown this is usually caused because you're not journaling and you don't understand your actual statistics okay solution journal figure out what your win percentage is overall how do you do that back test journal back test journal Okay, I back tested for one year. On average, I get 70% win percentage. Okay, now forward test it on a live market with a, uh, a demo account. Do you match that result? Yes. No. Get your cash out. Live account. No. You're 20 trades in. You've had three losing trades in a row. Oh my God, this is not working anymore. Oh my God, I'm in drawdown. 3% drawdown. I'm risking 1%. I should have done dynamic risk. Oh my God. But then, all of a sudden, when you put those 20 trades into your journal, your win percentage is like 75%. Well, then guess what? You're in probable-based drawdown. Probability-based drawdown. Continue trading. Likely it is, if you're feeling like this, you probably are risking too much. Go to dynamic risk or half your fixed risk. But this one is a price-of-doing-business risk or probability or drawdown, whatever you want to call it. Whatever you want to call it, it's drawdown. So has to happen and the only way you know you're in it is you're actually recording your statistics and you know what your win percentage is and what you should be at and if you're close to it if you're like if you do are thinking this and then you go into your um your journal and you look at it and you're like 50 percent um 50 percent drawdown or sorry 50 percent win percentage and you look at all the trades and they were all good now there are times where you can deviate greatly from your predicted um your risk, risk to reward or win percentage that can happen but it shouldn't be for very long okay like i gave you with the example of the ones here you know there are times where you have horrible losing streaks normally this happens in clusters okay if you have like a losing streak it will normally happen in a big cluster like this because the there was loads of news or the market was just really really bad usually happens with that so again probability based okay and honestly, guys, that's pretty much it. So quick recap, go over pretty much everything again, okay? Again, just remember that drawdown is normal. Your emotions is what gives its power. And it's not about removing the emotions, it's about understanding them. Identifying the drawdown you're in. Strategy-based, emotional-based, probability-based. Understanding that they're all different, okay? One is going to be one that always happens regardless. The other two can happen as well. But this one is, is will always happen. But these ones can be avoided. Yeah, they can be avoided. Strategy based and emotional based or being on tilt. Accepting losses for the love of God. Accept the damn loss. Price doing damn business. OK, um, fixed risk versus dynamic. Dynamic is what I recommend for most people. Dynamic again. Your example, a dynamic fixed risk. Which is fine. Fixed risk is fine. It's just you just have to remember. Make sure that you give yourself at least 15 to 20 opportunities to be wrong. OK. Um, getting out of the drawdown like we went through. If it's strategy based, you need to get your shit together. Actually test before you um, put real money on the line. Emotional based again. Too much to go over. But we had a good, good, good chat about that. Probability based. Just journal, figure out, are you actually close to your statistical probabilities or are you miles away? And that's pretty much it. Okay, guys, I hope, I hope this presentation helps you get out of your drawdown or reduce the amount that you go into drawdown. If you want to join the TBR Academy, this is my community where I go a lot more in depth into how to trade. The course is vastly different than what you just saw here. So just a preview, okay? We have a lot more stuff in the course than I could possibly put on YouTube. We have over 15 hours worth of more in-depth education. We have a whole roadmap to profitability, which basically gives you every single goal you should have from starting trader all the way up to being a profitable um, trader on your own getting rid of the nine to five it's all outlined there introduction to the market if you have no idea market analysis on a deeper level market dynamics the tools we use how to trade my strategy different ways of managing your account risk management a little a lot more in depth than what i just showed you trading psychology which is the biggie 
and then we have tools and resources and right down here which is like can't even get my head out of the way how to set the right goals and just a bit of a review so that was just one i wanted to show you and if you want to join the tbr academy link is in the top pinned comment this will give you access to our training community all the education but more importantly the tbr academy algorithm which trades my strategy gives you all the levels tp levels entry levels take profit levels stop losses i said that twice and it does all the work for you we have a 70 to 75 percent win percentage at the moment and about three or our minimum when it comes to our risk to reward and we are coming into our beta phase with our algorithm right now so if you want to join click this button and if you want to join our free discord community and let me know how you feel about this video and so on and so forth click the join the discord button there so again, guys, I really want to thank you for going through all this video. It was a bit of a biggie one. It was quite long. If you did learn something, please drop a uh, comment below. Tell me what you think. Tell me if any of this was a bit of an epiphany moment. Tell me what your biggest takeaway was. If you like this content, please make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you want more. And give me ideas. What would you like to see next in this format? And I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you later. Peace.